and welcome to this week's festive preview show coming from Vitality Stadium. BBC Radio Solent's Chris Temple joins me and we'll be talking through all things AFC Bournemouth in the next 15 minutes or so. Here's what's coming up. We'll be looking back at that 1-0 defeat to Burnley on the weekend. We'll be looking ahead to our Boxing Day game against Arsenal here at Vitality Stadium. And finally, we'll preview the trip to the Amex on the 28th. Well, we're going to start back at last weekend and that 1-0 loss to Burnley. Chris, on all platforms, it was a day to forget, wasn't it? First of all, can I just say thank you for making me wear this jumper. They're I'm very to, nice, I'm aren't they? I'm having to breathe in permanently here. The sizing has uh, caught me out a little bit, but if I suddenly run out of breath, that's why. Um, yeah, goodness me, the Burnley game. I've just as Before we came on air here, I've just finished blocking a few more Burnley fans on, on social media because you uh, end up having an opinion about Burnley. You get absolutely battered and they don't like it. Um, it was a horrible, horrible day. Horrible game. Um, I don't want to get drawn into talking about Burnley because I'll, I'll start uh, you know, getting even more criticism from Burnley fans as they start watching this. But they came to do a job. Let's put it that way. They did a job. Bournemouth didn't cope with it very well. Um, actually, funnily enough, I thought they coped physically quite well in terms of the aerial threat that we spoke about and Chris Wood and Ashley Barnes in the air and set pieces and things, apart from the one header in the course at the end, which sort of came off his shoulder anyway. So actually, I thought Bournemouth defended and stood up to that pretty well. Um, the game just Those games just do not suit Bournemouth. It's bitty. It's broken up. I mean, it was about you know 10 seconds between the whistle going. The referee had an absolute shocker for both teams. He was terrible. Um, and, you know, it just I think from the, from the moment Simon Francis got booted in the head after whatever that was, you know, 20 minutes or so, um, less than that. Um, I think that the afternoon just sort of slipped from, from bad to worse. No shots on target is at home is a, a painful statistic and one that Eddie Howe has not been enjoying hearing about or looking, up, looking back at. Um, so, yeah, it just those are the games that everything about it's a grind. Everything about it doesn't really suit Bournemouth. But these days you do have to find a, a method in those, in those matches and... Sometimes the cherries do, are found wanting. Well, you mentioned Simon Francis there. He obviously took a hit to the head, and Ryan Fraser as well. It was uh, an afternoon. He was in the and he was in the wars as well. Yeah, I mean, Ashley. Again, I'm, you're drawing me into talking about Burnley here. You're a devil, um, Ashley Barnes. I don't think you know that was an innocuous one. He didn't see Simon Francis coming. Yeah, his foot was a bit high. Frano's head was a bit low. I think that was a football incident. Um, I didn't like Ashley Barnes through the rest of the game. I thought he went down so easily. Um, the Tarkovsky challenge on Fraser is what's got me having to block people because I thought that was naughty. Um, he clattered him. He won the header. Of course he did. He won it fair and square. Big, powerful centre-half. He's going to win headers against Ryan Fraser. I just thought he picked his man. He saw an opportunity. If you watch it from side on, he really you could see him almost realise it was Ryan Fraser and see it as a good chance to lay one on him. Um, he had blood as well yeah, when he went yeah, down. Yeah, and I've seen him, seen Ryan Fraser ahead of the, you know, in his first training session back, and he's still got a headache now. He said he's still feeling, he's still struggling from it. Eddie Howe said he was not quite black and blue, but almost Ryan Fraser. So, of course, you expect wingers to get a bit of treatment. Um, a bit, you know, you expect them to, you know, let them know, let him know he's in a game. But I just thought Tarkovsky, I thought it was a bit cowardly. I thought he, he chose his man, um, led with the arm and the elbow, and I thought it was unnecessary. I didn't think, you know, he, as Simon Francis said in some quotes after the game, didn't really look to pick him up, see if he was all right. Didn't like that, left a bad taste. And it left even more of a bad taste when they got a late winner. And it was... That's my rant, that's my rant done. <laughs> it was just one of those games, wasn't it? 34 fouls from both teams, one shot on target, which was Burnley's goal. And of course, in all of that, Diego Rico has picked up a yellow card and he'll be suspended now for Arsenal. And again, that you know, you go back to the refereeing. I mean, there were so many things that didn't get penalised a yellow card. And Diego Rico walked two yards with a ball and gets a yellow. Um, I didn't think Ashley Westwood's foul on Rico, the first yellow card of the game, I didn't think that was a yellow. That was just a, a coming together. I just thought the ref had a nightmare. Um, but Rico, you know... It's, it's not ideal, let's put it that way, to, to get a yellow card in those circumstances. Um, in, a, in a week where you've got two games in less than 48 hours. Um, and of course now with Rico out, that's if you include Adam Smith, four left backs. Charlie Daniels, Lloyd Kelly, Adam Smith and Diego Rico. So there's some, there's some twiddling to be done. Jack Simpson obviously comes into the equation. We've seen him play left back before. Not necessarily his strong point, I don't think, but he is left footed. Um, Chris Meppham on the left side of a back three possibly. Um, there's, there's talk that Steve Cook potentially, you know, is getting closer. I'm not sure if Boxing Day is going to come too soon. So, yeah, that, that Rico yellow card has given Eddie a, another headache. Well, plenty of options for Boxing Day. And Boxing Day is where we're going to turn our attention to next. Eddie Howe has been previewing the game against Arsenal in his pre-match press conference. I didn't enjoy watching the game back, to be honest. We were a little bit negative, I think, with our passing. We weren't engaging in 1v1 duels. It was the type of performance that... Um, I wouldn't have enjoyed to watch if I'm a supporter and I think that's what we have to remember. We're here to entertain, to excite, 
to get the supporters on their feet in a positive way. You know, we're suffering with injuries and there's been a lot of um, rhythm taken out of the team. We need to find refine that very quickly. Um, I, I, we're not using that as an excuse, but it's reality. We're sort of in that moment where we're beginning to rebuild, um, but that would be definitely a, a blot on our recent performances. It was a disappointing day. He'll get the message to his players, even if it's a short time, short turnaround between games. I think he'll get his team playing as he wants them to in the way that he wants them to play. So we expect a, a difficult challenge. But for us, as it's, it's always about us when we play here, um, refinding that attacking swagger that we need. Well, that was Eddie Howe speaking in his pre-match press conference ahead of the game against Arsenal. Chris, Arsenal, they're a bit hard to predict at the moment, aren't they? Change of manager and, and a lot of squad players playing on the weekend as well against Everton. Mm, I'm still breathing in, by the way. Um, yeah, it's very hard to know what's going to happen with, with Arsenal because Arteta will only have had a handful of training sessions. Um, the, the team that played at Everton was a sort of a strange team. Freddie Lundberg, I think, rotated a little bit, gave you know a rocket to one or two senior players who maybe hadn't been doing it, got, left them out. Obviously, Ozil, for example, you know, after his little spat where he kicked his gloves he got left out I'm pretty sure we'll see him back um, so yeah it's, it's, I would say the team at Everton probably maybe is only half the team that we'll see here um, other guys coming back into contention um, but yeah I mean I, I said earlier in the season that you know you catch these big teams when they're in transition maybe not quite at their best United still in transition terrible result at Watford obviously follow, you know, so it shows their struggles are continuing um, but Bournemouth beat United in transition they beat Chelsea who are still finding their feet a little bit so Arsenal, you know, in the same way, you think, well, they're still, they're changing. Um, is this a chance to get at one of the big teams? So, yeah, we'll, we'll, it's very, very hard to know um, what sort of shape he'll set up with and what personnel he'll go with. And you talk about teams in transition there. When you go back to, I think it was October, we played Arsenal at the Emirates. We probably should have got something from the game. Yeah, narrow 1-0 defeat. And actually, away from home at the Emirates, Bournemouth haven't really ever been in the contest regularly. Here, though, there have been some great games. You know, the 2-1 um, you know, a couple of seasons ago, the win, the one solitary win. The 3-3, three, three, when it, you know, it was looking great and then all went wrong. Um, Frano obviously got sent off in that game as well. So actually, the games here have been, have been competitive affairs. Um, and there's something about the way Bournemouth seem to match up against Arsenal that, that sort of sits a little bit better than some of the other teams. Um, so yeah, I think here there's, there's definitely a, you know, an encouragement that Bournemouth and Arsenal, the way that Arsenal play when they play away from home in the past has often suited Bournemouth here. The, the bigger factor, of course, regardless of the opposition, is that Bournemouth are without their mojo at the moment at home. Um, and the, the reasons for that, everyone's trying to find reasons. Eddie's searching deeper than everybody, trying to find the reason. Um, a lot of people have contacted me you know, over the last few weeks to say the big key is David Brooks. Um, you know, the, the, the way that he plays up and down, he can suddenly switch defence to attack, he can take people on. When he gets the ball, he's the sort of player who excites fans and can suddenly make something happen. Um, and they haven't really got anybody else like him in that position. Ryan Fraser can do it, but he's not been that consistent. So maybe he's a bigger factor. Um, not, a, not a lot of goals coming from midfield. You know, Lerma and Billing haven't scored. Gosling's got one. Lewis Cook hasn't scored for the club yet. So again, you're looking at contributions. If your strikers aren't doing it, Ryan Fraser's not quite doing it. You need somebody else to chip in. No goals coming from midfield. So there's so many different things that, that can be looked at. I know Eddie Howes will tell you it works from the goalkeeper to the centre-halves to the full-backs. If everyone's not quite positive enough, the, the sum of all the parts is that it doesn't quite work. And as for Arsenal, there's no denying that their danger men are up front. They've got Aubameyang and Lacazette. I think Aubameyang's got 11 goals this season as well. Yeah, only behind Jamie Vardy at the moment. He's level with, with Tammy Abraham on 11. Um, scored the winner here last year in that 2-1 that victory, which was a good game. Um, he's a, I know Willow, my colleague on, on Solon, is a very big fan of Aubameyang, whose future at Arsenal apparently isn't, isn't that clear. So there's a bit of money knocking around upstairs somewhere. Maybe someone could make a bid for him. Um, Happy Christmas, that would be. <laughs> yeah. If you're around Max anywhere. Um, yeah, uh, no, Aubameyang's a great player and a real you know, athletic, physical handful. Um, We've got one or two issues at the back. Callum Chambers is, is suspended, um, so but Socrates will probably come back in for him. Um, but again, they've got some you know exciting young players as well who they've given opportunities to. Um, Gwen Doozy, not a homegrown player, but in the centre of midfield, is, is likely to come back in. Um, the likes of Pepe as well, who we haven't seen too much of. Um, so yeah, there's there's absolutely some ability there. But you know, if, if Bournemouth can patch themselves up and, and dust themselves down from the other day and you know, once again, like Chelsea, completely different test again. It's three completely different tests in succession. A big six team away, a team, a physical beat them up team here, and then a big six team here. They're, they're, they're all different challenges. So let's just hope we just cross out the Burnley game, forget it ever happened, uh, and the, the, the Chelsea Bournemouth turns up here.
And you mentioned some of Arsenal's youngsters there. I think Reese Nelson started on the weekend. Yeah. Emil Smith Rowe, Angelie Maitland Niles has been featuring quite regularly. They've they've certainly got talent, haven't they? Even if they don't have the experience necessarily. Yeah, and, and like Chelsea, they've had a lot of players who've gone out on loan to get their experience elsewhere. You know, Eddie and is as it, as it leads this season, England under twenty one, um, into international as well. So yeah, Maitland Niles is a has made the right back spot pretty much his own this season. You know, Smith Rowe's come in. Martinelli, the young Brazilian as well, eighteen years of age, has played quite a few games this season as well. So yeah, it's it's a, it's a nice mix. You know, when you've those clubs, if you're too reliant on someone like Ozil, who's very in and out, but you know when he's on his day, he's brilliant. But he has so many strops, and you know obviously with Emery, he didn't get on. So maybe the new manager will be a new lease of life for him. Uh, hopefully not on Boxing Day, but hopefully after that. Um, yeah, so it's uh, it's it's yeah, it's, it's encouraging for Arsenal's future that a lot of a lot of English youngsters in there as well. Absolutely. Well, that game will be here on Boxing Day. Two days later, the Cherries will be travelling over to Brighton, and it was quite the day out back in April. Of this season. Brooks stabs it through. Gosling square for Wilson. Callum Wilson pulls it back to Gosling, who finds the bottom corner. Not much cheer on the road for the Cherries recently, but Dan Gosling sends those fans happy. Born with a patient build up, pass their way through the middle. Corrected that stat today as Wilson plays it through, and now Fraser's trying to nip through. And Fraser shoots for goal! What a finish that is from Brian Fraser! Once again, the Cherries counter attack. And Fraser smashes it into the top left corner. He seemingly had it all to do from where he was, wee man. But he had it all to do, and he did it. But this time, Mepham and Smith between them there. As a challenge goes in from Knockart, and Adams is going to his back pocket here, Kevin Friend. And it is a red card for Anthony Knockart. but King holds him off and now a little ball where Brooks takes over into the feet of Fraser back to David Brooks this will be brilliant this is brilliant Bournemouth at their best here in Brighton scintillating football finished by Brooks game over Brighton nil Bournemouth three left hand side now Fraser just about keeps it in Solanke's with him Callum Wilson wants it too Brooks is arriving driven into the box where Wilson takes a good first touch not a bad second and a fine third and Bournemouth have an excellent fourth Callum Wilson joining in on the attack now again Ryan Fraser a contributor another assist for him Wilson finishes it and that sends the Brighton fans home with their tails between their legs Brighton nil Bournemouth four which suddenly sounds manageable doesn't it as Lerma picks up the ball and Lerma drives on through the middle here he's going to get ahead of Duffy is he it's going to run instead for David Brooks a real chance of a fit it could be Stanislas it is Stanislas it is five it gets better and better at the Amex for the Cherries Brighton torn apart cut to ribbons and finished off 5-0 well, Jefferson Lerma they need to go and congratulate him and what a magnificent tackle to block and win the ball back Well, a fantastic afternoon along the coast there. Chris, fans will have great memories of that one, won't they? Yeah, it's one of those days when it all comes together. I mean, we man bang one in the top corner while falling over, which was, uh, you know, even better. Um, yeah, that was, a, that was a fantastic day, albeit against a very different Brighton team. Um, you know, the, the sending off Knockart's um, wild challenge on Adam Smith, where he just lost his mind briefly, um, you know, had a, obviously had an impact that day. But you know, that was when the Cherries were flying away from home. You know, David Brooks, we saw, you know, getting in on the act as well. So that was when the attacking sort of machine was full, fully oiled and, uh, and moving in the right direction. Um, yeah, Brighton these days, as I say, under Graham Potter, different football. Um, you know, one of my good friends and ex-colleagues at Solent covers Brighton and it's been a, a thoroughly more enjoyable season, he says, watching Brighton this year than, than uh, watching under Chris Hewton, who used to play the, you know, they used to win 1-0 at home and it was very functional and quite drab football, whereas Graham Potter has brought some bright ideas in. Um, you know, credit to Brighton for giving a manager who didn't have any experience of English football a chance. Um, you know, he's come in and 
to be fair, he's, he's, he really has put his stamp on it. So, yeah, one or two new players in their team, but the solid sort of defensive unit of, you know, Duffy and Duncan and, and Dan Byrne at left back, who's the world's tallest left back, I think, at about six foot seven. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, going to be a different test, this one. And obviously, you know, the, first, the last team that Bournemouth haven't played this season. They've played Arsenal twice, of course, by the time we get to this game. Uh, and Brighton, they haven't seen us all yet. And then play them twice in about six weeks. So, um, they haven't been in great form recently. That's the only thing I will say. They had a great win at Arsenal, of course. Uh, now he lost at Liverpool to 10 men, um, but just had one or two sort of less than impressive results. Losing at home to Sheffield United, I mean, on paper, you'd say not a great result, but actually Sheffield United are absolutely flying. So, um, yeah, they've just hit, hit the buffers a little bit. And let's hope they're still, and they go to Spurs on Boxing Day before they play Bournemouth. So let's hope they're still on the buffers by the time we get to play them. I was going to say Spurs on Boxing Day, it's, it's one win in seven at the moment for Brighton, which doesn't look too great. But, you know, as you say, our games against Brighton, they're, they're always tough. Yeah, and let's not forget the, the turnaround as well for two games in less than 48 hours is a, I think it's a big ask for Premier League players these days. I know everyone, you know, will say, oh, you know, recover, get on with it, play again. Um, but of course, most squads in the Premier League will have a chance to turn three or four players around. I think Bournemouth have got I think, well, pretty much the same team's going to have to play. And there's one or two miraculously back. And Steve Cook can come back into the equation. Obviously, Rico will be back for, for the Brighton game. So there's another player back there. But most of the players are going to have to play. Um, I think we probably will see Junior Stanislas over the course of these next couple of games, which if, you know, if he's fully fit, I wouldn't be surprised to see him uh, against Arsenal, actually. I wouldn't be surprised to see him come in for Lewis Cook. It'd be great to see him back on the pitch. Absolutely, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Um, it would be great to see him back on the pitch. He's had so many issues, obviously, um, and a difficult time. So, And also, you know, a bit of wing flair. Is, is with Junior Stanislas on his day can provide that sort of flair that's been missing. And, you know, hopefully back sort of fresh and, and free from problems. So, yeah, but the, the turnaround, obviously, Brighton play lunchtime on Boxing Day, so they've got, you know, a few hours extra, which I don't know how much difference that makes. A sports scientist will tell you that, but I think it's a big, it's a tall order. Pep Guardiola's written to the Premier League to complain about City having to play twice in less than 48 hours. Eddie, I, I asked Eddie if he'd written to the Premier League. He said, it is what it is. We just have to get on with it. He wasn't quite as dramatic as Pep about it. And of course, talking about timings, it's an early kickoff at Brighton as well. Yeah, so that's what I mean. It doesn't yeah. make it any easier. Yeah, so, so that's exactly it. So it's, less, it's 40, what is it, 44? Four and a half hours or something rather than 45 so uh, 48 rather so yeah it's, it's not great it's early for the fans to get up on the the 28th as well but it's yeah, I'd rather be going there than Newcastle that's for sure and just finally Brighton they've had Neil Moore play scoring some of their goals this season and you know he, he looks a threat yeah and one man who knows him very well is Chris Meppham they were teammates at Brentford um, Chris Meppham I know is looking forward to taking him on so he's a very aggressive he said he's as aggressive in training as he is on the field at uh, Mopé he's um, and he, yeah he's another one who's transitioned very well to to life in the top flight again credit to Brighton for having a gamble on somebody who hasn't had any experience at this level so manager Potter and now someone like Mopé as well um, yeah so he's going to be certainly one to to look out for and I'm sure Glenn Murray will be lurking in the wings somewhere as well to try and have a say well, it's going to be a busy few weeks indeed. Now then, if you do want to have a go at predicting the score, you can head over to Mansion Bet's website and take part in their Predict 6 game. If you are coming here on Boxing Day, then we look forward to welcoming you and we wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Bye for now.